Hey everyone, it's CNC Keith with Centroid. In this video, I'm gonna go over Centroid CNC system hardware, and we're gonna highlight some of its capabilities by going over all the major components that make up a made in USA Centroid CNC control. Let's start by going over one of Centroid's most popular products, the all-in-one DC CNC control board. As the name implies, the all-in-one DC is a complete CNC control all on one printed circuit card. Combining the major CNC components, the motion control CPU, the three axis digital DC servo drive, and the CNC PLC all onto one printed circuit card has a whole bunch of advantages. The number one advantage is it simply makes the control very reliable. Having all those components on one card offers superior noise immunity and eliminates a whole bunch of wire and cable connections when compared to a system that uses individual components. The second big advantage of the all-in-one DC is all of its major components, along with the available accessory cards, are designed to work seamlessly with each other and right along with the Centroid CNC software. This gives you one source responsibility for CNC hardware, software, and support. The third big advantage of the all-in-one DC is that it's easy to install. This takes up a lot less space in the electrical cabinet when compared to a system that would normally use individual components. It also eliminates a whole bunch of wiring and cables that would run between those components. So not only does it save space, it saves time, and it just makes it easy to install a new CNC control or do a retrofit upgrade. Now the largest servo motor that the all-in-one DC can control is right around a 40 inch pound DC servo. Now that's a pretty darn good size motor because we've got a 15 amp, that's 15 amp per axis DC servo drive built in to the all-in-one. Now that's a pretty good hefty motor and, and like I said, like on old Fidals and uh, even, even some old Haas VMCs, they had DC servo motors just about this size. So the all-in-one DC can easily be retrofitted into a machine like that and run a VMC uh, and update it very affordably. Now, if you've got a project where you require a larger axis motor than 40 inch-pounds or you want to run an AC brushless servo motor, we've got another control card called the Oak Board. This also has motion control and PLC and a whole bunch of other good stuff built right into it. I'm going to go over the Oak Board next after I tell you all about the all-in-one DC. I just want to let you know the difference right now between the two, that this is uh, the Oaks more for larger machines or machines that require an AC brushless servo drive system. The All-in-One DC certainly has a niche market between you know, the bed mills, knee mills, uh, flatbed lays, small slant bed lays, small VMCs, medium-sized VMCs, and other specialty routers, uh, water jets, all those types of machines that are, fall into the category of running a 17, 29, or 40 inch pound DC servo motor, this is the ticket. Having uh, all these components built into this, there's nothing else better on the market right now to retrofit an existing CNC machine that has DC servo motors. We'll talk about retrofits uh, a little bit more in the end of the video. For now, um, let's talk about basics. How many axes can I control with the all-in-one DC? Well, it comes built in with a three-axis, 15-amp digital DC servo motor. So I could run three 40-inch pound DC motors directly with this card. Well, what if I've got a fourth axis or a fifth axis? That's no problem because Centroid has what they call the DC-1. Now, this is a single-axis DC digital DC servo drive. So if you have a machine that requires a fourth, fifth, or sixth axis, all you have to do is add these ones on. So if I add one to the all-in-one, one DC one to the all-in-one DC, now I have a four axis DC CNC control. If I need a fifth axis, I just piggyback another one of these right onto the system. And it's pretty cool, there's a single communication cable, it plugs right into the all-in-one DC, that pops right up on your CNC software, and you configure it like any other drive. These daisy chains, so if I have a fourth or a fifth axis, I just have another communication cable come out of here, right to the next drive. It's pretty darn slick. So you could run up to six 40 inch pound motors 
with the all-in-one DC and the optional DC-1. Now, we obviously put three axis in here because the most common application is a three axis milling machine or a two axis lathe, so it's got you covered. But if you got a rotary table, that's all you need to do is buy the DC-1 and plug her in and voila! Now you have four axis CNC control DC motors. Now let's talk a little bit more about motors. I've got three different motor sizes up here that are pretty common. I have a uh, 16 inch pound, a 29 inch pound, and a 40 inch pound. These are all Centroid DC servo motors that are made in the United States. Um, they simply plug right into the all-in-one. There's a little header here, three little terminals, and the encoder plugs right into the all-in-one DC. The drive on the all-in-one DC is adjustable in its current rating. So I can, with a dip switch here on the drive, adjust the current per axis so I can run different size servo motors on each axis. So for instance, I could put a 16 on Z, a 29 on X, and a 40 on Y, and with the dip, dip switches here, I could limit the current to the 16 inch pound to nine amps, 12 amps for the 29, and 15 amps for the 40 inch pound motor. This is pretty uh, versatile, being able to do that sort of thing. Now, it's interesting to note that any axis on a centroid can be defined as a linear or a rotary axis. What's also pretty cool is we can take two servo motors and pair them together to run a single axis on a machine tool. Now with the all-in-one DC and the DC-1, I can command and control up to six servo motors. Well, any two of those servo motors can be paired together to run an axis. Uh, common examples of this are CNC routers that have a big gantry. Uh, they'll have a servo motor on each side of the gantry. Well, in that case, you would have a three-axis machine tool that uses four servo motors. So I would use the all-in-one DC to get me the first three servo motors and the DC-1 for the fourth. And then I can pair the DC-1 with an axis on the all-in-one DC, so I get two servo motors driving a single axis on the router. Now the setup and configuration for defining which axis is a linear or rotary and which axis is X, Y, and Z, A, B, or which two drives are paired is all done in the Centroid CNC Control software configuration menus. Now in addition to the fantastic DC servo drive built into the all-in-one DC, we have an equally impressive CNC PLC section that has 16 inputs and nine relay outputs. The PLC built into the all-in-one DC is configured and designed specifically for CNC machine tool use and is packed with all kinds of CNC specific features. Let's check it out. On the input side, we have 16 inputs that are optically isolated. Many of these are pre-configured for common machine tool inputs, things like limit switches, uh, low lube, uh, high low range switches, e-stop, all that kind of good stuff. That's already pre-configured here, so you just run your limit switches wires right into the Phoenix connector. It's a little screw terminal, tighten them down. These inputs are also user configurable for voltage and polarity, which uh, allows the all-in-one DC to be very versatile and have a wide application for CNC retrofits, for example. Now on the output side, you have nine fused relay outputs. These relays that are in here save you a ton of time because on other PLCs, you're gonna have a TTL output and you would have to wire the fuse and wire the relay yourself. Well, with the all-in-one, like it says, it's all-in-one, it's all in there. So we already have ice cube style relays built into the all-in-one and they are, many of these outputs are again pre-programmed for common CNC machine tool functions. Um, let's just give you an example here. It's written right on the, the front cover of the all-in-one, what they come pre-configured. Um, we've got the lube pump output, flood pump, mister, spindle reverse forward, spindle enable, and there's a couple auxiliary relays, so if you want to run a dust collection or a vacuum hold down, you've got some spares to do that sort of thing. This is pretty slick, and having this built-in CNC PLC on the all-in-one will handle the PLC I.O. required of a lot of machine tools, routers, knee mills, bed mills. This is all you would need, and it would take care of all the I.O. for that size machine tool. 
Now, some machine tools might require more than 16 inputs and nine outputs. For example, if you have a machining center that has a swing arm tool changer or an um, umbrella style tool changer, you're probably gonna have more inputs and more outputs on that particular machine than 16 in and nine out on the all-in-one will handle. So just the all-in-one by itself is easily gonna handle a bed mill, a router, um, a knee mill, no problem. But if you wanna hook it up to a machine with a tool changer, we have the PLC 1616 card. What this does, this is an accessory to the all-in-one DC that allows you to, with a simple cable that plugs in, allows you to connect an additional 16 inputs and 16 outputs to the all-in-one DC. Bam, cable just pops in right there. There's four ports on the all-in-one DC right here that I can connect up to four of accessory cards, this being one of them, the 1616. And I would just plug that right in and voila, I would add 16 additional outputs for a total of nine plus 16 gives us 25 outputs and 32 inputs. Now I can connect up to four of these PLC 1616 cards to an all-in-one DC. So you can see we can easily add plenty of IO just by plugging in an accessory card. So you only have to buy the amount of IO that you need for your particular machine. Okay, we talked about the servo drive and the PLC built into the all-in-one DC. Let's talk about the encoder ports. Down at the bottom of the all-in-one, I have six encoder ports. Um, these use a standard DB9 connector and to plug in a servo motor encoder into an all-in-one DC, it's as simple as just plugging in the cable. That's it. Couldn't be simpler to plug in an encoder on an all-in-one DC. Now, you might be asking me, why are there six encoder ports on an all-in-one DC that has a three-axis servo drive built in? Well, an obvious reason is if you add a fourth axis with the DC-1, now you have a fourth axis encoder port to plug in that fourth axis motor. Another popular use of the spare encoder ports on the all-in-one DC is for a spin-on encoder. Spin-on encoder plugs right in here on number six, and that would give you not only true RPM feedback on the control, the all-in-one DC also would have then the capability for rigid tapping, a very popular, useful feature. Um, so it's very nice to have a whole bunch of spare encoder ports. You could also hook up scales, linear scales, to um, the encoder ports. This is popular on some knee mills uh, to add a quill in addition to the Z-axis servo motor. You have a quill or also on bed mills, even though the whole column, the Z, is under CNC control, it's nice uh, to have a, a linear scale on the quill. Well, you would plug that scale right in here and then that information would be displayed or taken into account by the CNC control. Um, for lays, you might have two MPGs, one for Z and one for X. Well, here uh, you could plug in on the third and fourth encoder ports on the all-in-one MPGs to control the X and Z movement on a lathe. Talking about MPGs, the, the all-in-one does have a built-in MPG connector. Um, this is for either a mill or a lathe. Um, this is the Centroid MPG and that plugs right in here. So when you get the Centroid MPG, you don't have to use up one of the encoder ports on the all-in-one DC. There's a separate connector for it over here, which is real nice. Now also built into the all-in-one DC is analog spindle control. Here in the upper left of the all-in-one DC, there's a connector that allows me to connect up and control a variable frequency drive. Now, you can control a wide range of variable frequency drives. This is just a little baby three horse one. This could easily be a 25 horsepower VFD. It does not matter. The all-in-one DC will output an analog signal to the VFD that tells the VFD how fast to turn the spindle motor. Now, a cool thing about the analog section of the all-in-one DC here to control a VFD is that it's user configurable. Now, most modern inverters accept an analog output from the CNC control to the inverter that's usually 0 to 10 volts. Now, some other inverters um, don't accept 0 to 10. They need something else. Well, this 
connector here, the output that it outputs to the VFD is user configurable. So I can change this, I can tell the control, hey, I would actually like zero to five volt output, or I want plus and minus five volt output, or maybe plus and minus 10 volt output. So this allows the all-in-one DC to be compatible with a wide range of variable frequency drives. Now also, you have an analog input over here on this very same connector on the spindle control section. Well, what's that for? Most inverters have an analog output signal that will you can pipe back into the all-in-one DC here that tells the control the load that the spindle motor is under at all times. And that load information is then displayed on the screen when you're operating the machine tool. Now talking about spindle control, we just went over this little section of the all-in-one DC that does have the analog input and output to control a spindle inverter. Now, what if you had a CNC application that required more than one set of A to Ds and D to As to run a VFD or something else? Um, I can think of an example, a common example, is a CNC router that would have multiple spindles. So let's say you had a CNC router with three spindles on it and you had three VFDs and you wanted to control them and get feedback from all of them as well. Well, you wouldn't have enough inputs and outputs to control three VFDs with the all-in-one just by itself. But Centroid has an optional A to D card that gets you an additional four digital to analog outputs and four more analog to digital inputs. It's called the add 4 DAAD card, and it plugs right into the PLC expansion ports on the all-in-one DC, similar to the PLC 1616 that we talked about before. And it's a very simple connection. The, the cable comes with the card, and with this card then, I would be able to run four more VFDs in addition to the one that's built into the all-in-one DC. Okay, let's talk a little bit about DC servo motor power. These centroid servo motors that I have in front of me here are rated at a maximum rating of 180 volts DC. And that's not necessarily the voltage that you're going to be running them at. That's the maximum safe voltage that you won't damage the servo motor. Centroid runs these particular motors at anywhere between 155 to 160 volts, somewhere in that range. Now, the power supply that we're going to use to generate the power to run these servo motors is right here in my hand. This is all there is to it. This is the Centroid capboard combo. This is a pretty slick part. This is a bridge rectifier and a couple other parts on a printed circuit card mounted to a big old capacitor. What this does is it converts AC power into DC power. So you put AC in one side and you get DC out the other. And this is how we're going to create the power to run the servo motors with the all-in-one DC. Now, since these motors are rated at 180 volts DC, if you rectify 110 volts with the capboard combo, you get DC power out the other side at a multiplication factor of 1.41. So, for example, if I put in 110 volts AC, I'll get about 155 volts DC out the other side of the capboard combo. That power, that 155 volts DC, then goes right into the VM terminals on the all-in-one DC. The all-in-one DC then uses that power to command and control all the servo motors. Now this is pretty slick, but uh, there are some cases where if you want to reuse a servo motor, like it's fairly common here, I have a, uh, a mid-80s uh, servo motor off of Bridgeport Boss. This, Particular one's a Powertron DC servo, and it's rated at a maximum voltage of 146 volts. So in the example that I just gave of directly rectifying 110, I could not use just the cap board by itself because I would generate 155 volts, which is above the DC rating of this old servo motor. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is there are a lot of machine tools out there from the mid 80s through the late 90s that are equipped with DC servos from companies like SEM and Baudor um, and many others that are good high quality motors and uh, are very robust and long lasting and it's well worth it to reuse them. Often all you have to do is put a new modern encoder on the back of the servo motor to update it to a much higher resolution encoder. The all-in-one's uh, CPU that's built in that we talked about earlier likes to handle a much higher resolution encoder than what they used in the old days. So to run these motors, 
I have to come up with a DC power supply to feed the all-in-one DC that is a lower voltage than the maximum rating on the motor. So how do I do that? Well, the cap board's pretty simple because if I put lower AC voltage in, I also get lower DC voltage at, out at that 1.41 multiplication. So if my maximum rating in this case is 146 volts, um, I can use a transformer then to take 110 volts AC and reduce it down to a lower voltage and then go into the cap board, which would then get me a lower DC voltage to run this particular motor. Well, this particular transformer I have in front of me goes from 110 volts AC and out the other side comes 83 volts AC. So if I stuck the 83 volts into the cap board, I would get about 117 volts DC somewhere around in there coming out of the cap board, which is well below the 146 on this motor. So I could then use this step down transformer in combination with the cap board to create that 110, 117 volts. And then that's what, what, that's what would go into the all-in-one DC to power the motors on that older machine tool for that retrofit. Okay, I'm wrapping up the hardware overview of the all-in-one DC based CNC control systems. Uh, there's two more cards that I'd like to mention. The first one is the encoder expansion card. The encoder expansion card plugs right into the drive communication port here on the all-in-one DC and gets you an additional six encoder inputs. Now that's six in addition to the six that are already on the all-in-one DC. You can uh, read rotary encoders, uh, MPGs, and linear scales using this card. A common use of the encoder expansion card is for the situation where you have a machine tool that has linear scales on each axis. So for instance, if you had a three axis uh, milling machine that used a spindle encoder and had three servo motors or even four, you would not have enough to run a scale on each individual axis with the all-in-one DC the way that it is. That's what the expansion card's all about. You buy that, plug that in, and it gets you a six additional encoder inputs. And then you could plug your scales in for X, Y, and Z right here and read those scales for positioning. Now the last accessory card that I'd like to mention is the PLC Add 6464. This plugs right into the all-in-one DC just like the other accessory cards that we talked about. Um, as the name implies, it gets you an additional 64 inputs and 64 outputs. Uh, the inputs in this case on this card are non-isolated and the outputs are open collector. Unlike the PLC Add 1616, which was optically isolated and had relay output. This card is more for a machine tool, like an OEM machine tool that where you heavily want to customize it and you have lots of inputs and outputs on that particular machine. Just wanted to mention it real quick because uh, it is available for use with the all-in-one DC if you have a need for this type of extra I.O. Now the last thing that I'd like to mention about the PLC expansion cards that we've gone over is that you can mix and match up to four of these in any combination for use with the all-in-one DC. Now this gives the all-in-one DC a wide range of compatibility with a large number of machine tools. Now when it comes to the machine tool interface, you have two choices with the all-in-one DC and all Centroid CNC controls. There's the 39 series operator control pendant and the 400 series CNC console. Now the CNC console comes equipped with a touchscreen color LCD display and a sealed membrane operator control panel. That operator control panel on the 400 series is exactly the same control panel that's in the 30, 39 series pendant. It is completely sealed membrane with tactile feedback and has dedicated keys for all the common machine tool functions. There's also an auxiliary key section here on the control panel that can be, uh, these are extra keys that are programmable by the user or the installer and you can even order custom labels to go on these keys. So if you have a a special control or a function that you want to control on a machine tool, um, you can actually customize these keys right here on both the 400 series and the 39 series. The operator control panel, whether it's used with the pendant or with the console, is plug and play with the all-in-one DC. There's a connector here on the all-in-one DC labeled jog panel. The operator panel plugs right in there and you're good to go. Now when you go with the 400 series console, the CNC PC can actually be mounted directly in the console. This is a heavy duty CNC console. It's made out of steel, 
It's very robust and has some very nice mounting options. You can mount it on a floor stand or you can mount it on a swiveling uh, articulating arm that then mounted to the machine tool. Um, the PC can be mounted inside the console or inside the control cabinet. When you go with the M39, you have two choices for the PC as well. The LCD screen that you use can be an all-in-one PC that has the PC built into it, or you can have the PC mounted down in the control cabinet. Now talking about CNC PCs, the all-in-one DC communicates with the Centroid CNC PC through one cable, a shielded Ethernet cable. One end of the Ethernet cable plugs right here into the all-in-one, the other end plugs into the Ethernet port on the CNC PC. Now, the CNC PC can be mounted inside the M400 like I mentioned earlier. We recommend that when you go with a Centroid, you get the Centroid CNC PC because we uh, pre-qualify the hardware and supply very robust uh, grade CNC PC hardware. But for the do-it-yourself crowd, you can build and supply your own PC to communicate with the all-in-one DC. The Centroid software runs on Windows 7, 8, or 10, and the PC that you supply, if you're doing it yourself, has to meet the minimum speed requirements, performance requirements, that you'll find on our website. The all-in-one is fully compatible with all of Centroid's probing products. Uh, here's the DP4 Touch Probe. It's very simple to hook up to the all-in-one DC. There's an uh, internal bulkhead cable which plugs right into the connector here on the all-in-one DC labeled Probe. And on the other end of that cable, it plugs right into the DP4. Now the DP4 is a very popular accessory on a machine tool. It's commonly used to set up your part zero positions or find dimensions off a part using Centroid's part probing software, which is a menu driven software inside the control. Now the DP4 can also be used for 2D and 3D digitizing of objects, which is pretty slick. I also have here the TT1 conductive tool setter that sets your tool height offsets automatically and the TT2 non-conductive tool height setter. Um, this particular tool height setter is useful if you have uh, ceramic bearings in your spindle because it does not count on the conduction of electricity to measure the tool height. Also, if you're using diamond tooling or other things like that, the TT2 is the way to go. The all-in-one DC, along with all its related hardware that we've gone over in the video, is available through professional on-site CNC installation and as a do-it-yourself CNC control kit. If you're looking for more information on the all-in-one DC, there's lots of good stuff on our website. I recommend you start with the all-in-one DC visual price sheet. This is laid out in a block diagram format that shows all the components that can hook up and run with the all-in-one DC, along with prices and part numbers and a bunch of other good information. So definitely start there. Also, there's full-size uh, electrical schematic hookup diagrams and installation and operator manuals. So check those out as well. Be sure to check out the oak board video next. The oak board is also a complete CNC control on one printed circuit card and is designed to be used with AC brushless servo motors and drives.